Hey YouTube world, what's going on? Mark here, back from TSD Industries with another episode on our beautiful and extremely naked Yamaha MT-03, which we're hoping to turn into an XSR 300, fingers crossed. If you've watched our last episode, you will know that this bike got some new shoes. Uh, we went ahead and put some scrambler style tires on, courtesy of our local RC Hill Honda dealership, and we threw some Shinko 705s on. Today, we are addressing this this fuel tank. Now, if you look at the XSR bikes, if you've seen them before or any retro, you know, style bike, cafe racer of sorts, you will note that their tanks are not aggressive at all. They're not race inspired. They're very sleek. They're very slim. Uh, they sit low. And obviously this is a problem. The OEM tank cover is this huge bulbous, uh, really nice tank cover, but we need to change that. So we sat down, my team and I, we looked at the bike, we decided what we needed, what we wanted to do, what the end goal was. And then we took a few steps back and started thinking, okay, well, first step, first step is this, second step is this, third step is this. And when it came to the gas tank, we were having a really tough time. Do we just weld and, and create our own little fuel cell? Do we make a fiberglass mold and then make our own tank cover? And then we had an epiphany. Light bulb went on and we thought, well, let's look at race covers specifically race covers for the R3. And well, we have an R3 here that's currently torn apart, so it was perfect. We took our CRC uh, race bodywork and put the tank cover on and it fit almost perfectly. They're, the brackets are a little bit different from the R3 to the MT-03, specifically this rear bracket and a portion of this front bracket. So we did need to go ahead and actually buy a new gas tank. So we bought an R3 gas tank off of a 2017 R3 in perfect condition and then we bought the tank cover and so here we are today's the today is going to be one part of this adventure for the gas tank we're going to test fit it we're going to make sure it fits and functions and, and looks good and then the second part will actually be addressing some of the major concerns if we need to use any you know fiberglassing techniques shape it a little bit better to our liking and our styling talk about coloring whether we're going to paint it wrap it what we're going to do in that department and really just get a good sense of once it's on, where do we go from here? Now, there's also another thing to note is that we have a lot of open space here. And towards the end of this video, I will go over what we do plan on doing with that space. I'm really excited. We got some really cool plans for that. But for now, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna start taking off this tank. There is still fuel in it, so I have to siphon it out. We're gonna go ahead, once it's off, swap over all of the pieces, the fuel pump, the hoses, everything we need, including the uh, gas tank cover, onto our new gas tank. Then we're gonna lay the bodywork over it, make sure it fits and sits perfectly, make any modifications that we may need to do, and then we'll go ahead and address the rest. So I hope, I hope that you guys enjoy this episode. Stick around because we got some really cool stuff we're gonna tease at the end of it. For now, let's get to it. So we're gonna start by removing our fuel cap because that is going to allow us to get enough clearance to stick the siphon hose into the opening and begin pumping the fuel out. Now there's probably about half a tank of fuel in here. Not 100% sure. After we installed the tires, I did try and romp around quite a bit and burn off as much of the gas as possible. But with the bike being in a relatively naked form with no uh, license plate on it and no lighting equipment, uh, I did not want to get in trouble with the law. So we couldn't ride around too much. This should give us just what we need. Perfect. I've never used one of these before. No, I'm just kidding. Just gonna, like the Black Eyed Peas said, pump it louder. Pump it louder. All right, so I think that's about as much as we're gonna get. Right now, we're just getting a lot of bubbles and kind of foamy gas. I think we're hitting the bottom of this tank and I think that's gonna be it. So we're gonna remove this siphon. We're actually, once we take the gas tank off, we may have to flip it upside down and drain the rest of the fuel out. We'll go ahead and cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, let's go ahead. We'll remove this siphon without spilling gas all over myself and the bike. And I think that was a pretty successful job. So we already took off these rear mount, rearmost screws when we started stripping the bike out. Now we gotta take these two off and then there's two up front 
that'll allow us to lift the gas tank up and then start disconnecting the hoses and lines underneath. So let's start. Now coming to the front, we just have these two forwardmost bolts that are securing the tank bracket to the actual frame of the bike. So we're gonna very carefully take those off. And we're actually gonna repurpose this mount. Um, I will talk about that when we go ahead and install it on the new gas tank. All right, there we are. All right, so now that we went ahead and unsecured the fasteners uh, for the gas tank brackets onto the frame, we can actually lift the gas tank up. Now, there are some hoses underneath, there's some electrical connectors for the fuel pump. We do need to take that off of this gas tank so that we can then go ahead and place it on our new gas tank. However, there is still a tiny bit of fuel still splashing around in here, and obviously I only have two hands. I'm not Octodad. I cannot lift this up and disconnect everything. So I did seek the help of my coworker here. I'm gonna lift the tank up while he goes ahead and disconnects all of the hoses. And then once we're done, we can go ahead and flip the tank upside down into, an, into a drain pan, dump the rest of the fuel out, and then we can begin the process of removing the fuel pump from this gas tank, putting it on our new one, and then installing the new tank onto the bike. So let's go ahead and take it from there. If you don't feel comfortable doing any of this, please seek the help of a professional. As you can see, we did grab a rag just in case we have a little bit of uh, spillage with some of the fuel. All right, so we went ahead and drained all the fuel out of this tank. We did go ahead and remove the fuel pump as well. This bracket is actually gonna stay on this gas tank. Like I said, when we bought the R3 gas tank, uh, it did come with that rear bracket and the tabs on there are inverted. They're facing upward instead of downward. You'll see why that matters once we get it mounted onto the bike. But right now we do need to swap over the front bracket onto the new tank. And then we'll go ahead and install the fuel pump, the fuel cap, and then we should be in business. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna grab my tool. This is a 10 millimeter socket on this ratchet. Take this off. All right. All right. So now this gas tank has become completely obsolete. We can actually move this completely out of here onto our storage rack. And now the fun part. So I think to begin this, we're gonna start with the bracket because it would make sense to start from here. Once this is on, we can invert it, we can flip it upside down, and then we can actually go ahead and install the fuel pump. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna line these up manually, start hand threading them in, that way I make sure I'm not cross threading. Once they're on there, catch a few threads kind of locked in and you could take it. And give it another quarter turn. Maybe an eighth of a turn, I guess. All right, so that bracket is secure. We can go ahead now. I need a rag. All right, so now with that bracket installed, we can go ahead and flip the gas tank upside down. There's no fuel in here. There hasn't been fuel in here in a very long time, I'm assuming. And we need to install the fuel pump. A lot of people may not have ever removed a fuel pump from their bike. They may not even understand what it looks like. So this is a really cool teaching technique. Here is what a fuel pump looks like for most modern motorcycles. You have your fuel filter. This is actually, you can remove it from most fuel pumps, clean it out, or even replace it if you see it getting all clogged up. It's pretty interesting what your fuel will have in there after a year, two, three, four, ten 10 years of riding. 
This right here can save you or break you should it get clogged or break. This entire assembly, really. This is why proper maintenance is so key sometimes. It's amazing what you think you have to pay for and just some patience can really teach you. I mean, you can do this yourself. You can service this yourself if you feel comfortable. Uh, this is the fuel float. So this is actually fuel pump sits like this and the float will sink as the fuel level rises and falls. And then these electrical connectors are obviously for the, uh, the fuel gauge on your dash if you have one. And as you saw, I might've been leaking just a little bit of fuel, nothing crazy. That's just whatever is in this hose right now. So we're gonna go ahead and seat this, slide the float in first, carefully. Now there is a gasket, there is a rubber gasket here. You wanna make sure that is seated inside. And now you have your, your locking bracket. And this is actually what is gonna lock this in place onto this tank. It is important to note there is a direction to do this. It has these uh, cutouts on here. And this kind of tells you what direction that, what orientation that sits on, onto the bottom of the fuel pump. And we have our hardware over here. These are some pretty small screws. So you don't want to go too crazy over tightening them because they will snap inside the fuel tank. And then what are you going to do? So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and uh, just kind of get them hand threaded in. Uh, this is very similar to uh, changing out a tire or a wheel on your car. You do want to go in a star pattern. And there will be some tension as you're tightening this down. That's just the gasket being pressed and making a full seal around the, the entry point and this uh, mounting surface to make sure that no fuel leaks out of the bottom. And before we actually mount this onto the bike, I am gonna pour a little bit of fuel in here just to make sure that there are no leaks from the gasket and from this fuel pump sealing air, uh, surface. There obviously will be a little bit from this hose, but that's nothing to be concerned about. All right, now we can go ahead, get a little bit tighter. Again, this just really ensures that you're not pinching the gasket anywhere. You are making full, you are making a full seal around this uh, entry point. And once all of them are pretty snugged up, you do want to go ahead and give it a final ugga dugga manually with your uh, torque hands. So now that they're all seated, I'm just gonna do one last tighten. There we go. Now it is important to note this, not only does the uh, locking plate need to sit in a specific direction on the fuel pump uh, bottom, it also needs to sit in a certain orientation on the actual fuel tank itself. Some of these distances from these on these holes are slightly off. So you wanna make sure that you do go ahead and uh, have them seated properly. And there we are, it's all secure, nice and tight on there. Like I said, we are gonna pour a little bit of fuel in here, make sure there are no leaks before we actually mount it onto the bike. And let's take it from there. All right, so we're gonna pour a little bit of fuel in here. Just enough. All right, so now here we are. We're gonna pour a little bit of fuel in here, hopefully without spilling this all over myself. That should be enough to tell me if there is a leak. We're gonna go ahead and inspect it now. I, I'm suspecting that we should be good. We go ahead and lift this up. 
not seeing any signs of leaking or moisture bubbling out. So I think we're good. We are good. This is mark approved. So now we can go ahead and reinstall the hoses underneath, put this gas tank back on the bike. This is the aerator hose that Bart actually uh, replaced and installed during our works pack installation. The stock one is a black hose. You will not have this. If you wanna swap it out for a clear one, cool. Um, it's not really needed. So that's gonna be the major difference. If you're doing anything like this, you will notice, oh, I don't have a clear hose. That's because we swapped it for a clear hose. It's normally a black one. Um, and then we have one other hose, this connection, and we should be good. All right, so now that we know the fuel tank is not leaking any fuel, as we did replace the fuel pump, we can go ahead and start connecting all of these lines. So I'm gonna hold this up while my coworker here begins to connect some of these hoses. So we should have a ventilator hose, two, probably two ventilator hoses, and then the connection for the fuel pump. So that is now complete. And what we can do at this point is actually fasten it to the bike. We have, again, two screws in the front, two bolts in the rear, two bolts in the front, two bolts in the rear. As always, you wanna begin with hand threading them in to make sure that nothing is cross threading. Perfect, perfect, and perfect. You can make any final adjustments. All of these mounting points, they do have slots in them to allow a little bit of a flex. So you can make sure everything is lined up to your liking and then begin tightening it down. I think where we're at right here is Probably pretty perfect. That right there ain't going anywhere. All right, so the fuel tank is on. Before I go ahead and put the fuel cap on and finalize that, I do wanna show you why it was important for us to swap over the bracket on the rear, but not on the front. So for the front one, we actually bent this bracket so that we can fit the gas tank cover without needing to buy a secondary bracket. This one worked perfectly fine. There was just one small tab that was interfering with the underside of the gas tank cover. Now, when we come to the rear, these tabs were facing downward on the stock MTO3 uh, rear bracket. We need them to face upward because when we go ahead and bring our gas tank cover over, there are actually mounting points back here and we needed them to line up. We will need to drill those holes out, but as you can see, if they were facing upward, that would be a problem. So that is why we wanted to swap that one over, but the front was okay. This is actually a pretty good uh, rendition and a good idea of what it's gonna look like when it's all installed. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna install the fuel cap, pour some fuel in here, turn the bike on, make sure it's pumping fuel through the system and there's no leaks, and we'll call it a day. Now on the MTO3, if you've watched any of our previous build series episodes, you will note that we did swap out the gas tank cover for a Spears Racing quick release gas tank uh, keyless gas cap. So we're gonna go ahead and very gently get these bolts seated, make sure there was no cross threading, and we can go ahead, tighten them down little by little to prevent any tension too much tension being applied on one side and not the other. This helps make sure that everything's going down and seated at the proper angle. It avoids any issues with one side being higher than the other, things like that. One more turn on each. We are good. So let's go ahead and pour some gas in it now. 
You want to be really gentle with this. That should be good. All right, moment of truth. Let's fire her up. Put our gas cap back on. Give this a quick wipe down in case there was any spillage from the overflow. All right, we look like we're in business. Let's go ahead and we're good. Fuel is good. There are no leaks that I'm seeing underneath the gas tank, on top of the motor case or anything like that. So I think we're good. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, I did speak about it, but we do need to actually find a way to secure this to the bike. So we do have these rear mounting points. CRC provider of this uh, gas tank cover does a really good job of tapping out these small pilot holes on all of the tabs. So we actually need to drill them out, make sure that they line up properly. But so far, so good. It looks pretty good. And I think it's gonna sit really well. It's matching up with these mounting tabs. There's no weird gaps anywhere, except right here. So we are actually going to 3D scan this bike with this gas tank cover on. We're gonna get all of these surfaces. We're gonna come up with a way to close out this gap to make it seamless, make it look like this gas tank cover belongs on here. What else? Well, we do need to come up with a color scheme. We're gonna have to change this. This is not gonna be a, blast, a black gas tank. So we're gonna actually change this, come up with some nice livery, nice low color scheme, figure out if we wanna get it wrapped or if we wanna get it painted. And lastly, we need to figure out what we're gonna do with this front area as well, being that those shrouds are now gone. The XXR line does a really good job. They have these beautiful aluminum blocks on the side here. Uh, for the right side, they have a nice little mesh vent. On the left side, the stator is actually over there. So we're gonna toy around with some ideas here. Obviously on the MTO3, the stator's in the back. So we're gonna try and come up with a plan to make this as XXR uh, related as possible while giving it that TST flavor that we all know and love. So we have, again, a long journey ahead of us. But this is the second step. First step was the hardest. Second step, we're building up some momentum. So now we just gotta keep this up, keep going. We're gonna keep chopping away at this bike, coming up with a, coming up with new ideas. And hopefully at the end of this all, we have what resembles an XSR 300 that we believe would be an XSR 300. So for now, this is Mark at TST. I'm gonna go ahead, clean all this up. We have a little bit of a mess behind me. I'm done, I smell like gas. I'm ready to go home. Catch you guys next time. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Visit tscindustries.com, link will be in the description as always. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, have ideas for us. If you have ideas on how we can do certain things, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to turn that notification bell on. Mark from TST Industries, catch you guys next time. Ride safe.